everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Chat with Mama B. Woo! I hope everybody's tuning in. Please don't forget to share with your friends and family. Amen. Today's going to be an awesome, awesome episode. Today's topic is a Christ-centered marriage. Is it possible to build our marriage with Christ in the center? Our marriages cannot fall apart if we deliberately center our marriage on Christ, our solid rock. And I have the pleasure to introduce our wonderful doctor and pastor, Beatrice Ezenaidi, amen, an author, a mom, a god mom to many, a good friend to many, amen. So Mama B, could you lead us in a prayer, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you all to this wonderful series today, Christ-Centered Marriage. I want to say tune in and share with your friends, share with your family, and God will bless you. I know God has something special for somebody today. If only you just be attentive, I'm sure you will get something to share with somebody. Before I pray, I would like to First of all, introduce the man of God that is here. I think it's a privilege to have <laughs> such a man of God around us. So before I even pray, I want to acknowledge you, man of God, welcome. We are so grateful you. you came. Thank we, you. I am, I'm very grateful. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Bishop Mafe, we are so grateful. Thank you for coming. Uh, she will introduce you, but I want to acknowledge <laughs> your presence here before I even pray. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate you. So before we go to uh, today's series, we want to briefly uh, invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. Um, and then uh, he's the best teacher we know that. And whatever we do, we want to first of all invite the Holy Spirit to be with us and take charge of the program. God bless you all. Let's pray. Papa, we just thank you so much for another Day, another time to spend Papa this time together here and with those of people washing up offline, Papa we thank you we just ask to God Jehovah Father that you have your way Holy Spirit we ask that you present yes. you are the greatest teacher Papa, none of us know it all yes. but Papa in heaven when we invite you Lord you begin to expand shape even the little we know you amplify it to touch the lives of people. Amen. And that's why we are here. We invite you to be present with you. And teach all of us, O oh God. We give you praise. I thank you for this man of God that came on the way to come be with us today. May you bless him. Amen. And bless Father each and every one of us here. Yes. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, with great pleasure, I would like to let you all know a little bit about the bishop. Mr. Ola Ofe. Amen. Ola Ofe. Can I say that? You I'm trying the best. Trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I did get a little help before the show. <laughs> Amen. So, Bishop Ola Ofe is the presiding bishop of the Household of Faith for All Nations, a fast growing church in Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. Amen. He is a man anointed and called of God with an extraordinary evangelistic grace and apostolic calling. A Muslim turned a preacher of the gospel with an unusual insight in the word of God. This uncommon anointing has distinguished him as one of, as one of the men of God for this end time. With a profound understanding of praying, preaching, and teaching the word of God, with signs and wonders following. Amen. 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 And Bishop Allah Afe is also an author of several best-selling books, including Power Pictures, Seven Ingredients of a Happy Marriage, and Seven Areas of Conflict in Marriage and How to Avoid Them. Amen. Oh, so you're married too. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. And he has also written and published several prayer and confession manuals. And he currently has a total of 18 books and titles already published. Amen. You can order his books on his web on their website, uh, Hoffman.org or at Amazon.com. Amen. So please check them out. 
Amen. And Bishop Olaofis also happily married to his beautiful wife, Bishop Elect, Mrs. Olaofis, whom he calls his queen. Queen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She is by no means a lesser achiever. She's the co-pastor of the ministry, bishop and bishop-elect misses. They are blessed with two dynamic children, a daughter, Deborah, and a son, David. Amen. Amen. We're so happy to have you, Bishop, on today. Thank you so much. You are welcome. <laughs> So yes, again, today's topic is a Christ-centered marriage, amen? So remember, um, Facebook fam and Instagram fam, if you have any questions, please post them, and don't forget to like and share, amen? Amen. So let's start with our first question, and it says, what does it mean to be a Christ-centered people? Amen? Bishop? All right, well, I want to thank you for that warm, warm introduction. Thank yes, you so much. Good. Beautifully done. Thank you, Mama P, for having ah. me. What a blessing, yes, what a joy to be with you. Great yes, woman of God. We thank God for you. Thank God for your husband. Thank yes. God for the ministry. Amen. You're doing a great and fantastic job. And yes. We're glad to emulate what we see you doing. Amen. The Lord will continue to strengthen Amen, and encourage sir. you. Amen, you're, you're, you're a Christ uh, loving woman, and we Amen. can see that in you. Amen. My wife sends her love Amen. and um, and our children to their offering, and I know they, they're excited about what God is about to do today. In Amen. Life. <laughs> so we're glad to have you join us. Uh, if you're watching, please share this and also get many more people on. Yes. We want you to be able to be. Uh, we want more people to participate in yes. this wonderful dialogue. I want yes. to hear from you also. I want to get your questions and yes. your comments. Yes. Well, let's take the question. What what you said? What is Christ centered marriage? What does it mean to be a Christ centered people? A Christ centered people. Well, a Christ centered person is someone who has acknowledged Jesus Christ as his or her Lord and personal Savior, who believe that Jesus died for him or her who has confessed Jesus Christ as Lord. And then you, you make up your mind to follow him. Every time you see Jesus call people, he say, follow me. If a, a follower is somebody who emulates the uh, character, the behavior, or follows the teachings of the person who he or she is following. So a Christ-centered person is a, it's a person that believes in Jesus, who follows Jesus, who adhere strictly to the words of Jesus and attempt to pattern his life or our life after Christ. Amen. Um, do you have anything yeah, to yeah, you said some things here that I think are profound. It's not just someone that believes God. It's those who pattern. I like that. Those who pattern. It's not just it's beyond following. So if we are Christ-centered people, we emulate, we use that word, you emulate Christ. The way, what, what will Christ do? There is this uh, badge, young people put on W something, they say, what will Christ do? What will Christ do? What will Jesus do? What will Jesus do? What Jesus do? What will Jesus do? Thank you. <laughs> that is Christ-centered life. That's why, you know, I think this topic is very, very profound when it comes to marriage. Because Christ's lifestyle is not conditioned to anything. He loves you. Yes. So if it's Christ-centered, you are emulating Christ and living like Christ. Whether your spouse is the best or not, you do it Christ's way. Not what you feel. Not how you are affected. Christ's way. What will Christ do? So, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And I think that's something a lot of, well, some young couples are struggling with uh, um, remaining the same and following God, no matter what their spouse does. I think yes. that's a challenge in a lot of, maybe older marriages too, but I think the younger ones with the way the world is set up kind of now and what, I guess, society or social media shows, it's not really that sacrificial. Yes. Especially if you're, it's like it's 50 50, you know what I mean? So if you're coming with that, then I'm coming with that. I'm coming, I'm coming. So uh, <laughs> this is a very important yes. topic because yes. we have to yes. follow yes. 
God's way. Yes. So that means no matter what, if you're mad or not, you have to treat them how they deserve to be treated, which is how yes. God treats us is with grace and mercy. Yes. Amen. So thank you all. That was awesome. Our second question, which is a really, really yummy one. Okay. What is the difference between the self and Christ-centered marriage? Okay. Um, let me say something before I come to the second okay. question. I will ask you to remind me. Okay. Since we're already in the marriage right now. You see, a Christ-centered marriage is a marriage that is supposed to be patterned after Christ. Um, while I was praying and meditating, the Holy Spirit gave me a profound understanding and it makes it really uh, powerful. If you read uh, Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 20, 29 there about, but in verse 25, as uh, specifically the Bible says, husband, love your wives. And this is for everybody. Love your wife even as Christ loved the church. So when we're talking about Christ-centered marriage, the, the church is the bride of Christ. So the husband is supposed to love the wife as Christ loves the church. Yeah. What kind of love does Christ have for the church? When we talk about Christ, the thing that comes to our mind, which you mentioned, is sacrificial. Mm -hmm. Christ sacrificed his life mm -hmm. for the church. Christ gave his life for church for the church. What helps a marriage, you know, by the grace of God, be married 25 years or getting to 26 now. What helps a marriage is not going into the marriage with the intention of receiving, but giving. Most people, when they get into marriage, they are always thinking of what they can get. Mm -hmm. What can I get out of this? Mm -hmm. Jesus never came to get anything. He came to give his life, gave his all, gave himself. So when you get into marriage, if you want your marriage to work, be a person who loves to give like Christ gave unconditionally. The Bible says Christ died for us even while we were yet sinners. sinners. So if you want to love your wife, if you want to have a Christ-centered marriage, don't wait for the best of your spouse, either the man or the woman. Yes. You give your all. In spite of what the person or the spouse does, it doesn't matter. When you get, when you want to be a Christ-like person, Christ didn't wait for us to be good. He didn't wait for us to be perfect. He didn't wait for us to be better before He died for us. When you get, uh, when you when you are married, both the wife and the husband, you give your best, give your all, give your best comment, give your best wishes, give your best self to your spouse. In spite of what your spouse or the state or uh, the, the spouse uh, are trying try to say, maybe the man or the woman, okay, let me say from the man perspective, no matter how your wife behaves or doesn't behave, it doesn't matter. You be the best husband you can be to your wife. The same thing with the wife. Be the best wife you can be to your husband without expecting anything back. Jesus died. And there are still people that have not accepted Christ right now. But he didn't wait for, wait them. for them to... <laughs> we're talking about Christ in that now. He didn't wait for them to want to uh, be saved or make a commitment before he said, oh, I'm going to die for you, I'm going to die for you. Know, he gave his life. The beauty of this is that when you start giving, it's a principle. You're going to reap. Amen. Without you, the, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Amen, amen. Good amen. measure, press down, shake it together, mm -hmm. run it over, you're going to receive. If you give, you have to start giving, but a whole lot of people want to receive good measure, press down, press down <laughs> shake it together, right. run it over, either from the wife's submission or from the husband's love, when they have not given, given. anything. anything. You see, that's where the challenge begins. Big challenge. Yeah, that's the big challenge. So once you learn to give, you see, um, it's 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 a, it's a law of nature. You're going to reap without you even asking for. You know, a man don't have to say to a woman, submit yourself to me because I'm the head of this home. Oh, no. You have missed it. No, love your wife to submission. 
That means I have to treat her like a queen. Amen. She can't treat me other than a king. <laughs> <laughs> right. You understand? Know, you know, so when I'm treating you like a queen, you can't be treating me like a nobody. No, no, so, <laughs> and I didn't have to tell her to treat me like a king. No, no. <laughs> but she treats me like a king. Yeah. Because I, I'm, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm honoring her. Treating her like a queen. Mm -hmm. So when you give, you're going to receive. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord is saying. That's the thing about Christ. If you, if you want to talk about it, there are many aspects of marriage yes. we can talk about. But when we want to talk about Christ, the life of Christ is given. He gave his life. Mm -hmm. He gave himself. He's always giving. So when we when you, when you we come into Christ's center, my the wife also, give your submission to them. No matter how crazy the man is. Mm -hmm. When you are when you submit, it takes two to quarrel. Yes, so even a madman, even a mad person, if he if he assaults you and you don't respond, he wouldn't go ahead to do the to do the next. He will come because he's expecting you to respond. Mm -hmm. So when a woman is submissive by nature, the nature of Christ in you, your husband will have to honor you. Before we go, I want to talk about a great man of God, uh, Smith Wigglesworth. We'll I read about his wife. His wife was saved before he got saved. Mm -hmm. He was a drunkard. He wasn't saved. But the wife was a believer. He would go out and get drunk and he would come back home. Mm -hmm. One thing behaving anyhow, the woman would be praying for him. Mm -hmm. She would be praying. One of the days he came, he was so drunk and he came into the house to 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 came back home at the middle of the night. He thought the woman was going to lock the door or lock him out. She opened the door. She was so nice to him. He looked at her and said, what kind of woman are you? She opened the door for him to come. <laughs> Gave him food. She treated him, she treated him well. <laughs> Thank God for that. That's open him up. The, the man broke down and said, there is something about you. Yeah. She said, it's not about me. It's about the God. Amen. That led to his conversion. And we, 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 we read yeah. about him, the great exploit he did. Yes. The wife was the mm. gateway, the access to yes. his salvation. Our submission. You see, there are a lot of people who are watching now. How can I be submitting to that? You see, that's the problem. You have to give. You want to receive. Forget about uh, receiving. Always just give. And there's there's a there's a program I learned uh, you know um, many years ago. If you point one finger at pro at somebody, one two three is pointing back at you. So seventy five percent of the problem is you. Yes. Twenty five is the person. Yes. In any in any so you have to take responsibility. Yes. Don't try to fix. Your spouse. Don't try to make your spouse over. No, no. Fix yourself. You see, the, the reason for conflict most times is that we, the, the fault in us is projected in others. We see our faults in others more. That's what oh, Jesus said. Before you take. That's good. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah. Explain it again. The fault in us is projected in others. Oh, yeah. Nice. When we have deficiency, uh -huh. Or we have weaknesses. Uh -huh. We cover our weaknesses, but we are easy to see somebody else's weaknesses <laughs> magnified. Based on our own problem. Bro based on our own problem. Uh -huh. So okay. when you learn to fix yourself, mm -hmm. you can't fix any. You can't change nobody. You can't even. That's the challenge with most marriages. You try to make your spouse over. Try to make them to be something. Ideal, what doesn't you exist. can't. Yeah. Do that. You just be the best wow. you. you. Yeah, you can only understand people when you are commanded to walk in love. They know. They know. For instance, <laughs> well, sorry, 
<laughs> People used to tell you that somebody is sleeping when you are preaching. Am I to tell you you are sleeping? Don't you know you are sleeping yourself? You, no, you came to church and you are sleeping. Am, am I to tell you that why are you sleeping? You know you are sleeping. So, if you came to church to sleep, Jesus told his disciple one time he was praying, he was sleeping, he said, sleep on. Yeah, sleep on. Why do I want to wake you up? We came for prayer meeting, you are sleeping, you came, maybe you couldn't sleep at home. This is a good place for you to sleep. Have you? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Bishop. I think that's some really, really good nuggets. Um, I think a lot of people Love sometimes struggle. Yeah, like, I like that point. They just can't get it out of their mind to, like, I need my needs met first. And it's such a stumbling block because it totally cuts you off from doing anything else. So I think having a relationship with God and renewing your mind so you can push past that is a big deal. Because in marriage, you might not get everything that you want, but you still need to serve. Sir, sir, sir. Yeah, Mother mm -hmm. God, I have a question with yes. what you said. We know about a Nigerian lady that uh, the husband was abusing, physical abuse. And she keep on saying she was in that, she remained in that marriage and she keep on saying, you will change. You will change. Even they want to tell some, oh, don't tell nobody. We will change. She keep on trusting and believing that the man will change. What's the you know that I heard of, I heard something like that. Mm -hmm. And the lady died in that. So how can you, what do you speak to that? How do you speak to that? You see, we can't actually effectively judge that is only what we hear. It's one of the things I say, before you get married, we're talking of Christ-centered marriage. Yes, now. Before you get married, make sure that you, there is nothing new in a, in a marriage that you will not see in a courtship. When you're courting somebody, the signs are always there. Mm -hmm. So, if you, uh, when you get married, it's just more, it's just more magnified, but you're going to see the sign. You the know, signs are already it's already red, there. Red so, if you, yeah. that's why we normally say, you know, uh, know each other before you get, before you get married, get to know each other uh, a lot. Yes. But once you decide to get into marriage and you see such um, abusive uh, partner in, in the process, mm -hmm. most times, most times, I will, give, I will tell you a story. I'm not judging anybody, I'm just talking now. Yes. I don't know the person and I don't know the situation. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a story. There's a pastor who was, I heard this message. He was preaching, he said, he was talking about a couple, both of them were in the church. The, the husband is a pastor in the church. The woman, the woman is a minister, I think in the choir or something. She, they were had an argument mm -hmm. before service. She slapped the pastor. Mm -hmm. She picked the phone and called the pastor. My husband is beating me. So the pastor was like, your husband beating you. Where is he? He says, it's right here. So give him the phone. I can't even go near him. The man, because the man was perplexed. You know women, you people are powerful. <laughs> no, no, no. What do you think? This, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I mean, I want, I, want to, I want to make, because you see, most times, you see, when, a, when we talk about abuse, we talk, that's what God said. Husband, love your wife. Woman, submit to your husband. I'm not trying to jump on. Most times, women, you can say a word, one word can kill a man without you raising a hand. That's true. Yeah. Is this what your mates do? You see, the man now, who would he go and tell that? In a way, in a sense. So, most times, when you talk about abuse, it usually both ways. That's the point I'm trying to make. That's what I'm trying to make. But the woman, we will believe the woman faster than we believe a man. If if I mean, I normally counsel people and say, when you are in trouble with your wife, once you see that if there's a crisis, you just walk away because anything she says, they will believe her before 
they ever believe him. The instance is the story of Joseph with Potiphar's wife. We are able to see from the picture. He was serving Potiphar with all his heart. He, he said he couldn't do it and she has been pressurizing him. But when the husband came, guess who went to jail? Joseph went to jail. The wife, <laughs> we are able to read and see the true picture right now. But if you were there, nobody would believe that you, a slave, the boss's wife is harassing making you. Are you, are you. Have you lost your mind? This is the boss's wife. So most times, I'm not saying, but most times, the power is in the hand of the woman. So we normally, I will not, the Bible says it clearly, say, you know, uh, every wise woman builds a house. There's a way a woman, I believe, can relate with a man, no matter how violent he is, he will not be violent to her, no matter how violent. But there's a way also she can be behaving, and she looks like a saint to the world, but the man can't even say it, because even when you go, how do you say that? That's my point. I'm not saying that I don't know the case you're talking about. I'm just talking hypothetically. So for those who are watching, and I'm not saying there are no abusive men, but I'm saying that God has given women the power to be able to control the atmosphere. And once you walk in wisdom, you will bring a man. Why, 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 do, they, why do they arrest most criminals? Killers, where do they find them most times? They find them in the house of a woman. As violent as they are, anytime they're looking for a criminal, they want to find out who is his girlfriend. Who is the, because there is a woman that can tame. There is that grace for women, ability to be able to tame the violence in any man. And when a woman understands that, then she's going to be able to maximize it. And that's where the wisdom of Christ comes in. Go ahead. Man. Sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. I really, 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 you know, understand what you are talking about. Uh, for Christian marriage, you know, those who really uh, live in the fear of God. But there are other Christians who do not live in the fear of God. They go to church. They might sometimes have positions. However, like the case we are talking about, even the case witness and they said Papa gave us came to flog our mother the case we are talking about even the kids said our father gave us came to beat up our mother then she should have left but she did not because I, I, I brought it up because she keep on believing like the the uh, what you the story you gave to us about the man that came in and he was drunk and the wife being a, a spirit-filled woman she opened the door she made food for him we are we hear a lot of stories like that even in back home in africa the man is a drunk and then he will come and then he throw up the woman will you know pack all those mess and then you know take care of him and after some time yeah we we, we so some of us have heard that before but in a case where you keep on giving and somebody takes advantage of you, they see that humility as weakness. Instead of appreciating that God gave me a good woman, they see it as a weakness and they want to, you know, have authority over that woman and control her and mess her life up. We also see things like, that does not mean that it doesn't, women don't do it too. I'm not saying that. But there are cases that the woman is abused and she doesn't even know herself and she doesn't even know if she's even a human anymore. In such cases, do you still keep on be submissive or do you keep on uh, being the Christ-centered woman you are? You see somebody beating you, eating you, beating you. You know, asking your children to even that one, the children even said, Yes, that is said we should beat up our house. You know, do we still keep on just believing God? But she said, Oh, you will change. 
No, that's not the point I'm making right now. That's not my, my, my own understanding of what the what, what I'm trying to make with, with regard to that. Is that most women, when you are in such a situation, seek guidance from a counselor, a married counselor, a man of God, a pastor, to be able to advise you uh, in a way. You know, there's, there's a way you can always earn your respect through communication. Communication is very vital when it comes to marriage. marriage yes. Yeah, you have to communicate. Yes. Whatever you can't, uh, whatever you you can tolerate, you cannot change. Whatever you condone, condone. you cannot change. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you make your stand known. Marriage is not by force; by force is by choice. Yes. <laughs> you see, so you have to make your stand known. I mean. Somebody recently, I was counseling somebody, and the husband was misbehaving. So I asked her, I said, Why? I told her, I said, Why don't you sit him down and talk to him? Let him know who you are. Obviously, she's never said that before. Mm. Yeah, she's never said that before. She's never been able to sit her husband down to, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But you have to communicate and say, Look, I can't stand this. I can't take this. Mm. If you go no, if you want me, mm. I'm mm. not divorcing. Mm -mm. I have parents. I have relatives, or I might find. So I might not even have nobody, but I can find a place. If you still want me, I'll be right there. But until you change your character, you change your attitude, we can't be in this. It's. Mm. It's not, it's not conflict. You can say it politely, in a nice way, but you make your point known. That's communication. See, the communication of, of must become effectual. You must be as clear. I say, look, if you want this relationship, I'm here for you. I'm your wife. I'm, I don't have any other husband. If you're going to be my husband, these are the things I want. But most women don't demand, don't, don't expect, that's the thing again, don't expect the person to know how you ought to be treated. Sometimes you have to tell the person Thank the you. way you want to be treated. Some women, in a sense, it might shock you, some women like to be beaten. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, I've seen, I've, I've heard uh, women who say, you know, can't you slap me? I want to be slapped. <laughs> so, the husband might assume that you like it <laughs> because you have not made it clear or the spouse. So, you have to make it clear. For instance, when we got married, my voice is loud. Yes. When I'm talking, I talk loud. When I talk to my wife, she said, Why are you yelling? I said, I'm not yelling. I'm telling you. She said, now you are still yelling. So, I have to keep lowering the decimal of my voice. So, whenever I'm talking to my wife now, it's usually a romantic way. No matter how angry I am. Hello, queen. Can you please? Because once I, I say it in my voice, my yes. preacher's voice, uh, I will not get what I want. And she will tell me, you have started yelling. <laughs> so, that was my training. Yeah. But if I didn't know, my mother never told me I was yelling all this. Year. I was <laughs> yelling. <laughs> but I got a trainer. <laughs> trainer. So, the women at Treasure were supposed to help train. Don't, you see, both, mm. both in relationship, each person can help the other person to be better yes we can't we don't know our weaknesses we don't know sometimes we don't even know our strength until somebody points it out to us so i will admonish the woman to talk to the husband and say look the next time you i heard of a celebrity and if i mention his name you will know when he was cutting his wife he said he was talking on the phone to some other girl in the middle of the night and she woke up. Yes, and, we know him. He said it all Okay, over. so he said, and she heard, and she, in the she started packing her stuff. Yeah, oh. she went away. It, was, it didn't slap. It was just communication. 
He said, he said, when you are ready for something serious, call me. He said, he broke the phone. He broke the phone, break everything. He said, so, he said, that's the stand a woman is supposed to be able to take. You don't have to be violent, yes. but you have to take a stand. Let's take a stand. Yeah. And I think most times, some don't do it. You know, uh, even Jesus took a stand. We're talking about Christ Center. When he went to the temple, sometimes he would, he would take a stand. Jesus is always taking a stand. Yes. So we have to take a stand, but we don't have to be violent about it. We don't have to be abusive about yes. it. Yes. Amen. That's good. So um, I guess just to clarify, that might not be for all marriages, I guess. Like, the lady who was severely beaten to death by her husband. So I guess it just has to be, it depends on the party, like if they're willing to receive the woman's stance, but we're not yeah. condoning for you yeah. to stay yeah. <laughs> in a super abusive, you know, if you feel your life is threatened. Please, just yeah. Just move remove away. yourself from the situation, you know, and see. Because women are, clarity. women are valuable, women are, they're, they're the treasures, they are treasures, they are treasures of God, they are the best thing that can happen to a man. Right. So a man that does not understand that the, the value of his woman, of his wife, does not deserve to be married. And the woman has to let the wife know, and that's what I told you about that. You are a treasure. You are not uh you, you are not lucky in a sense, or somebody say, Oh, I, I'm I'm just lucky that somebody found me. No, 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 no. God has already, you know, put his treasure in you. You are valuable. You are, in fact, the destiny and the future of a man depends on, the, on his wife. A man cannot be more successful than how his wife helped him to be. That's why when God saw 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 man, the first thing he said, he said, "Look, your life will never be good because you are alone without a woman. The best and your full potential can only be realized when you have a wife, mm -hmm. and that is still ongoing till now. So the woman will help a man to be whatever God wants him to be." Yeah, that's that's very good. That's really rich. Do we have any comments or questions back of the house? Any questions? All right. Uh, thank you, Bishop. That was really, really rich. Um, and I like the part about, um, I just think it's really tricky. <laughs> Because some people go into marriage like wanting to split everything down the middle and you just have this really like roommate mentality, you know what I mean? That totally goes against a Christ-centered marriage. So you kind of see that a lot today on social media what and stuff. Uh, they just, everything is just split down. It's just, it's just, right, that servanthood, it's, it just doesn't exist. So you know, like a roommate, everything would just be like... You do this. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah, that's not Christ. We're right. talking about Christ-centered, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. Christ, Christ and God, they are one. Yes. So the goal of marriage is for you to become one. Yes. It says two, the two shall become one. one. Mm -hmm. So you want to be united yes. in your vision, in your dreams, and in your goals. Yes. I want to say this, you know, when you when people get into marriage, when you go into marriage, you, before you get into marriage, or even if you're married right now, see yourself as a team, mm -hmm. you, you know, See yourself as being uh, uh, a team, not in a competition. You're not trying to uh, outwit the other person. You're trying to complement each other. Right. You're trying to form, forge a family together. It's togetherness. So whatever you do, do it with that mindset. That's what will make a marriage work. Like um, my wife and I, we don't have, this is yours, this is mine. There is not like that. If, my, if sometimes I could wear my wife's, if she said this is my dress, I could just wear that dress to just make a point that, look, this is not, I, I, even if I can't wear it, I could just put it on my neck or something. This is, you know, she does the same thing. It, it's, 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 you have to do it deliberately so that you become one in everything, you know. That's the goal of, we're talking about Christ centered Center. marriage. Yes, we have to be one. You know, you know, Jesus was talking, um, Jesus was speaking. It's a greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friend. So we are supposed to be laying down our lives for our spouse. That's the greater love. Try to, you know, overdo each other in desiring the best of 
each other, you know. Yeah. So you want to love. You want, there is nothing. What? what, what why, why do you want? The moment you have, this is mine. This is yours. You're not going to have a relationship. So you have to make sure that you 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 stop that. Even if you are doing it right now, it's going to be a a, a point of conflict. Mm -hmm. Try and find out, especially in, in the area of finance. Try and find out who is more prudent. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let the person be in charge of the finances of the house. That's why. Yeah. That's one of the things that is find out who is more prudent. You know. <laughs> one of the things I found out earlier on that my wife likes to spend money. So what I did is. I'll give her the money. I said, "This is the this is my paycheck. Once you spend it, and it's all done, you're going to tell us the next thing we're going to do." So, yeah. No. So that's it. You see, there's no stress on me no more because when you say there is no money, I'm asking, "Okay, what do you do?" So she now. On her own, I said, okay, you keep the money. <laughs> <laughs> so every morning now, so mm -hmm. I, did, she can hold it or whatever, but I decide we'll spend because now we've come to time that I'm more prudent in that area. She has become so excellent now, you know, over the years, but that was how we started. So, but most times, if a man has money and says, I don't want my wife to know how much I have, oh, she's going to put so much idea. demand on you. And it's going to be conflict. There's going to be conflict because and now they, yeah. you are not, uh, you, you, you're hiding from, you're not giving me what I need because I don't know what you have. Yes. I'm assuming you have so much mm. and you didn't tell me what you have. She's already your wife. You did, she's already your wife. So why are you trying to what, what are you trying to impress her? You say they were both naked and were not ashamed. So let us see your nakedness. Oh, let her know it's transparent. Yeah. Let her know your paycheck. Let her know how much you own. Amen. That's it. You, are, you see, you free yourself of stress. You free yourself. And she will even have ways she can help you to make more money. Yes. You see, women, their suggestions are really very powerful. Especially when, when you're married to Christ and tell me, she can tell you something you are not seeing. Yes. And that's why a woman needs to know what you are doing, know your business, so it will help your interaction and your conversation. Yeah, that's very good. Thank you Amen. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. Like you said, you know, about the finance, no wool can keep the money there. Yeah. And that's how we've been living right from Nigeria. You know, I'm the keeper, my husband is the spender. And you see now, you see the reverse is the case. Yeah. <laughs> so I keep the money. And then. He spends it. <laughs> you see, you just have to find out who does it better. Who does it better? It's not a matter of say I'm the head. No. It's not, it's not, it's not so, who is right, but what is right. What is right. Yeah. What works well. Right. Yeah. Right. What yeah. works well. Right. What works well. Yeah. yeah. What works better for your own marriage. Mm. You know? So I think that is very important. Very important. Uh, one of the things I know that have caused uh, some conflict among even our African marriages here, the women will go and work. Mommy be a nurse. And then the man will ask that the woman put a paycheck in his hand. They don't come to compromise. So we will do this thing better. And then the woman is grudgingly giving that money. Before you know it, conflict in the marriage. The so, travel talk. That's where yeah. conversation comes in. If yes. you notice like the man is spending the money, mm -hmm. then you bring him to the table and say, look, this money, this, we're not quarreling, we're yes. just talking. Yes, yes. You know, <laughs> what, what is going on with this, 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 that, 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 that. And when you have, we're talking about Christ Center. Yes, Christ Center. When you have the interest of uh, both of you at heart, you're going to always compromise and going to do what is right. Yes. Yeah, yes. That, that's very important. One of the things in the Bible, the Bible says, let this man be in you. Which was also in Christ, Christ who being in the form of God, taught it not probably to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, of no took reputation. the form of a servant. Yes. So learn to serve your spouse, 
you know, be the servant in the relationship. And once you're doing that, the, the other person also will serve you easily. Amen. So the sowing and reaping come back to the same. When you sow, give, you're going to receive. Receive. And it's easier said, but like what advice for people who are in the thick of it? Because you know what I mean? Like, yes, yes. Sometimes you it, know, like if you're sometimes. serving, serving, yes. serving, serving, serving sometimes. You know what I mean? Because you can't put a time stamp on when you yes. start to reap. Yes. So, like, what would that look like for a man and a woman? For you? Or like how would that look or an example you could give to somebody on how to just press through if they're serving you know what I mean their spouse whether it be a woman or a man and it's not being reciprocated yet like how do they function and navigate through that you see the, the truth is that I, I thank you for that question very intelligent question and very you know the Bible says marriage is honorable the honor of marriage is not uh, for anybody but for God. Marriage is God's idea. Mm -hmm. So, when you are married, the person you want to honor is God. That's right. And you have to believe in the sovereignty of God. You know, most times, a whole lot of us believe, we don't actually believe that God is sovereign. That God can change things. We would rather want to change it in our way. You see, yes. when you realize that Whatever you are doing, you are doing this. He said, "Whatever you do, do it utterly as unto the Lord, not yes. unto men." Yes. You see, you are expecting your spouse to reciprocate. That that man, that mindset is already faulty because mm. you might have an unreasonable expectation. Mm. Let God be the person you are doing this because of God. Mm. If need be, God can take care of the person for you better than you can. Yes. I, I I mean when we got married I couldn't understand my wife. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't understand her. Not that she's she just quiet in a way. I talk. Mm. When I have a problem and I'm trying to talk, she's just looking at me. She say, she's, she say maybe one word. And I say, is that all? I say, yeah, that's all. I say, but I can't have to talk more about this thing. She said, that's it, she's really talking. And I found that look, God gave me this wife. I have to go to God and find out how to relate with her. And God spoke to me on how to relate with my wife. Mm. And he spoke to her and I said, please God, can you tell her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord and he can turn it anywhere he wants. You see, you see, so, you see that expectation, most times when you say, I, I am waiting, I'm not seeing changes. Who are you expecting the change from? The person? No, you are not uh, you, 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 you are not to expect anything from that person. If that person does it, fine. If the person doesn't do it, good. Expect God to be your rewarder. Mm. Expect God to take, that's where your faith comes in. God will take care of you. God will take care of the person. God will, God will change the situation. But when you no longer, you think God is too slow, God is not working. Mm -hmm. You can't see anything mm -hmm. in the natural. It doesn't mean you just be yourself. You see, you, you see, we've moved from now. We want to receive. We are no longer giving. Don't forget the primary Christ center is giving. Christ now has died mm -hmm. many thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. And he's still believing that people will be saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes. So he still believed that the, he said that's what he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We he's still working something. We don't know what he's doing, but he has a way. Yes. And he's still working. That's why I found yes. that somebody who never when I got to college, when I, I got saved, I got to college. The first thing I got to college, some sisters said they are praying for me to be saved. I was even under religion. Till I got out of college, I didn't get saved. Mm. But they kept saying, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. Well, look at me now. I'm I'm carrying a microphone, preaching the gospel, going all around the streets. I'm doing this thing that even myself, I, I, it baffles me. How did I get here? Mm. But thank God they didn't give up on me. Yes. Sometimes we are too much in a hurry to bring the change. To bring the change, we don't even allow. He said, "He said the trial of your faith worketh patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect." complete entire lacking nothing so that patience is what we christians 
We don't have it. We don't have the patience for they people. Don't. We want people to be patient with us. With us. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. So um, we know that a Christ-centered marriage, we're definitely about serving. Amen. It's not about receiving, but we're here to serve. Amen. And I think another big thing is your relationship with God. Because if you don't have one, or if you say you have one, but you're not fully thriving in it, it will be impossible to serve. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So um, any questions from? Anybody or any comments? Okay. Amen. So you can go ahead and answer the top Okay, no problem. Amen. So Bishop, could you give us some instance when uh, you exhibit a Christ-centeredness in your personal life? I guess in your marriage. In my marriage. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, that's what I do every day. You I, live it. I live it. <laughs> because, yeah, like I said, it's giving. I'm always trying to um, give my wife the honor she deserves, the care, you know, um, help her to be the best person, whatever she needs to be her best self. I'm always doing that. That's every day. And we always, we normally say to ourselves, we try to, because it's reciprocal. She's trying to give me, the way my wife, what she does for me and all the things she does, I'm like, this is too much. And she's saying, you are too much. Because it's all about giving, not receiving. Yeah, but you're gonna receive when you give. Yes. You see, that's a principle. You have, you're gonna receive. So I try to, you know, um, Everything my wife, there is nothing I know. If I read, I read a lot. When I read, I want to tell my wife what I've read. She's not interested in what sometimes what I've read. Like I my know she's not interested, mm -hmm. but it's part of my giving because if I've read something and my mind is operating at a different level mm -hmm. and I begin to behave at that level, and she doesn't even know where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. it will be difficult to carry her along. So yes. Whether she's interested or not, I have to give her and tell her, look, I, so she said, you read the book and tell me the gist of the book. <laughs> so I read, then I tell her the story. You see, that's the same way Christ, you know, gave himself for us. He's always, you know, wanting our best uh, interest in every way. Best. best interest in every way that he can, you know, to help us to succeed, to help us to to try in our life, in our goals, in our vision. So that's the, that you, you give of yourself, you give of your time. You make time for your spouse. You make time for their needs. You, you, when it's convenient or not convenient. Right. Jesus, Jesus died on the cross. You see, that's where selfishness ends. You know, a Christ-centered marriage is not selfish. Yes. A Christ, you see, I, 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 I don't even know how a marriage can work without knowing Christ. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah, that is the truth. It's, it's, it, it, the, the, the real God's mind is for us to be Christians. That's the kind of marriage God was. That's why I said the, 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 the church will love, uh, uh, which, which, which Christ loved the, uh, the church. We, the husband should love the church as Christ loved. Uh, the husband should love the wife as Christ loved the church. There's no way you can have a marriage that will be well. And successful, no matter how long without Christ, without Christ at the center, there's going to be crisis. No matter how far it has gone, yeah. No matter how far it goes, that's why you find that humble, they will try their best, but it can never be. Uh, they, it can never work without Christ. Christ is the one that holds all things together. Yeah. So, so we just have to. Whatever we see, Christ, you pray for your spouse. You pray for your spouse. You pray when whatever it is, Christ pray for the church. You pray. You know, you, you 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 observe your wife, you observe your spouse. What you know, what 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 do they need? How do they feel? You know, you also help them in every way you can. You know, intellectually, uh, physically, be there, be there, not be absent. Be there. You know, compliment them. Jesus always spoke good about us. Compliment your spouse. Say nice things about us. But you know, she's the best thing that has happened. To you, you tell your spouse, you compliment her looks, 
Yeah, she's the most beautiful woman you have ever seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every other woman, yeah, yeah. You have to tell her every time. You know, she's so pretty. Wow. <laughs> God, God did over time in continue, you know. Oh, you have to tell her those things and you have to mean it every time. I think my husband needs to hear that one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear any compliment. Ah, uh, okay. You should... hear compliments from outside. You look beautiful already. <laughs> Just got one now, Yeah, you don't need to compliment her always. Women, that's what makes them, you know, uh, that's what make, make a man to flourish. You have to, they want to be, you know, told they are beautiful, even if they have heard it over and over again. Always, you know, wow. Well, you know, just recreated, just love, you know, that not, you don't, you, 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 it's gonna, it's gonna always. Work for you when you do that. Let you do that. Ah, so the couple is beating each other. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Say, you need more compliments, huh, baby? I don't know. How you know. I don't know <laughs> the question is coming from. Do we have to know the name of the? No, no, no. Okay. no. Uh, about the beating aspect. Did did the woman listen to the Holy Spirit or her pastor, or did she just decide? On her own to stay and be beaten. Yeah. Um, I think she's just uh, in her own way. She thinks she's obeying God. So when they talk about the abuse, she will say he will change, which means she's trusting God. For her, that's Christianity, that's Christ-centered. Even when she's abused, she will say, oh, it will change. Don't worry about it. Even when her her mom came to take her out of the marriage, she went back again to the marriage, to the abusive marriage. And she stayed there thinking that it will change till the day, you know, the bitter husband. She passed on. So, I, I, she's, she's in her own mind, that is Christ like. You know, even when we talk about Christ like, there are interpretations. People have different interpretations of Christ like. You know, our uh, interpretation was endurance. Bible talk about patience, you know, giving people time and all that. So, she was given, that was why I brought up that, uh, this thing. When we talk about, you know, when you are sacred, does not you don't wait for how the person responds. If it's Christ centered marriage, you don't wait for the response. You just do what you think you know that is right. That is right. You know, you just you just keep on doing it and thinking that one day it will change. Even in abuse, she just accepted it. And uh, it's not like uh, something hidden, even the children witness that. There was a day he has the children to beat up the young moms, and they did. Ah. And I think that some people, especially the women, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. Women don't abuse men, but it's more common. I think that they just lost, they lost themselves in their relationship. They just lost themselves. They don't even think they what anything anymore. When somebody keep on telling you something before you know you disvalue yourself, you don't even know if you have a value in your life anymore. It's it's common, you know. Even with parents, when parents begin to tell their child you're not amount to anything, the child begin to believe that actually I will not amount to anything. Begin to believe the lie. So if the spouse begin to tell you you are useless, you are nobody, you are this, and you keep on accepting it. And you keep on saying one day this man or this woman will change. You see down there and see down there. That's her own case. She sat there and sat there till the day she was out. My, my, my thing is, you know, for those who are not married, before you get married, I would say make sure you marry your friend. Make sure that the one, the goal, one of the goals of marriage is friendship, companionship. Don't marry for uh, any other 
reason. Wrong reason. Reasons, yeah. Make sure you marry your friend. You know, we'll talk, you see, we couldn't, we couldn't go for those watching. We're yes. talking about Christ centered marriage. Christ centered right marriage. You're already in the marriage, so we're trying to see. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> so even if you, you know, when, like, sometimes we look at things in with the limited wisdom we have. Yes. Whatever you do with the goal of honoring God, mm -hmm. whether to death or alive, mm -hmm. God will always reward you. In the eyes of people, you might seem like you've wasted your life, but that's where it comes in. When you believe in the sovereignty of God, even when you are, when you suffer for it, like Christ suffered for, for, for the world, people are like, oh, why did, why did he have to just go and die like that? But he was trying to honor his father. He was beaten, he was dealt with. But God has highly exalted him right now and has given him a name that's above the So when you believe in the sovereignty of God, all things work together for the good of them that love God and are the God according to his purpose. We all want to live a long life, but who knows why, you know, sometimes because God will have healed her, God will have her. whatever the reason is. We might not be able to tell right now, but I would say honor a marriage. Do it because you honor God. Because yes. most people right now, when it comes to marriage, I have I, I, I counseled a couple some years back and I said the Bible said the wife actually told me, leave the Bible out of this. Wow. Yeah, there were Christians, and she said to me, she was even the most spiritual in a sense, but she said, leave the Bible out of this. Wow. And when she said that, mm. I, 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 I just carried my Bible and I said, because I don't have any opinion. <laughs> I don't have anything <laughs> about this that I say. You see? So, when you marry, you're doing it to honor God. The marriage is to honor God. The devil doesn't like marriage because that is God's first uh, institution. Mm -hmm. So the devil wants to rubbish it, tear it apart, and Very people nice. easily just flow with the easy way out. Sometimes the easy way out might not be the God way out. So, you know, but when you learn to honor God, but you use wisdom, like, like if somebody's abusing, find your value. You know, take your stand and communicate. Tell the person what you want and what you can't tolerate. That's that's simple. Amen. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mama B, for hosting the Bishop Ola Wale Ola Ofer. And uh, another one say preach Bishop, and another one say uh, I love and honor you, my King. The wife who lived a life that made her husband hungry. And another one said, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And then I went to say, well said, Bishop. And uh, another one say, ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay. uh, uh, amen. Take it to God. Take it to God. And then, when it is life amen. threatening, please cry out. Cry out. Seek help. Seek help. Amen. Uh, more grace, man of God. Amen. 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 Bottom line, know who you are and see yourself in the mirror uh, or eyes of God. Amen. Glory. Amen. Thank you. And Bishop, um, also what, with what you said about us being 75% of the issue, mm -hmm. I think in the servanthood, you'll begin to notice that God is changing you as you continue to sacrifice and serve. So you, those different character issues, he'll begin to deal with you about. So it'll give you clearer vision. So Once you are changed, you can, your, your spouse will change. That's the truth. We are all trying to be better. We, 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 are, we are all coming from our rough, uh, diamond and rough, but God is chiseling things out of us. Once you become, be the best you. 
and try to love your spouse. Love, cherish, submit, and whatever, and then you're going to find out that your spouse, you know, I know that there are people who are, maybe for lack of a better word, maybe they are not, they could be animals or something. You have to also re realize that um, Adam I didn't call chimpanzee bone of my bone. So you have to know your when you want to marry, marry, don't marry an animal, marry a human being. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that you have to you have to do that. So once you you see, most times your choices, that's why you, you have to take time in reaching that decision. Don't rush. Don't allow anybody to rush you into anything. Find out can I live with this person? Can I go with this person? But it's not too late when you're already in. You can always uh, change the person with wisdom. Just take time out, pray, and talk, communicate, find counselor, call people that can help you. You see, one of the things that I want to say to people before I got married, we, we had a marriage counseling session, which helped us a great deal. And it's the foundation for our marriage. So before you get married, even when people come to meet me and say, I want to marry, I take them through counseling, I, I can sacrifice and take you through it with my wife, spend time with you because you're going to know yourselves during the counseling session, you're going to see some things that will be flags or red flags or whatever, you can know yourself. So make sure you do that because most of us, most people who got married, they are emulating their parents, you see, and your parents were not godly people. When I, when I was going to get, before I got married, the first day I went to somebody's house, uh, one of our pastors was a deacon there. I went to the kitchen, uh, to their house, the house is to, through the kitchen, and I saw him in the kitchen, was wearing shirts, was frying something there. I have never seen my father fry anything, so I'm like, his wife, has she traveled or something? Why is this man frying something? Then, while I was there, I now heard, thou bring, bring me a glass of water. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is it right and bringing glass she of water? She was on the couch, saying, bring me. And the guy said, it took the glass. I said, my God. And she didn't something like it. But I got, I, I got close to him. Yeah, it changed my life a lot. Because, yeah. yeah, it changed my life because I got close to him. I never saw that with my parents growing up as a man in yes. my own family. You don't even go to keep the kitchen. So now, yes. Yes. you know, I tell my wife, you please. I can cook. I can stand with you, be talking while I can. <laughs> you go, I'm not supposed to go to the kitchen to cook, but I learned from him. So what I'm saying is that try and um, get into uh, a counseling session to know. You see, marriage is something you need to learn before you get into it. That's right. They are very important. So if you are watching right now, if it's not too late, even if you are married, go to counseling now. Because you want to make your marriage better, go find uh, godly counselors and go to marriage counseling and start afresh. It's never too late to be right. No matter how long you've gone on the wrong road, you can always make a U turn. Even if you are married now, go to marriage counseling. Some of the things that you think are peculiar to you, they are common problems to most marriages. And once you understand how to handle it, then you can solve the problem. So, still seek counseling, call Mama B. You can reach out to us, whichever way. Find counselors anywhere you are. And then, you know, it's going to be a blessing to you. But learn and then change. We're always learning. Many things we learn every day. That's why we read. We're always read books. I have books on Amazon.com that will help you. Nuggets that will just change how you think. And things will be different for you. One question. Okay. Uh, you mentioned of uh, knowing your person before you get married and during that friendship or courtship time, those flags. If there are flags that you discover during that courtship uh, that you don't like, how do you handle those flags? Is it something that you think you can live with or is it something that uh, you can ignore? before you make up your mind for the marriage? Good question, sir. Uh, I normally say to people that a broken relationship is better than a broken marriage. If you can't stand it now, then why do you think you can handle it when you get married? It's going to be even, might be worse. So if you can't, if you can't tolerate it right now, then just, you know, you don't have to 
marry the person. Maybe that's not the best person for you. You have to find out what you want. Know what you want. Mm. Know what you want and know what you don't want before you yeah. before you get in. You know, yeah. Before I go marry, I have a list, ten list of what I wanted in the wife. So when I'm talking to you, I'm looking one, two, three, four, five. It's not. It's not. <laughs> I'm, it's not good. So there's no point. You see. So when I met my wife, she scored nine over ten. The one didn't matter. So, and you know, so because you're going to keep seeing the same thing when you get married, what you, yeah, you see, so what you see is what you're going to saw, or what you saw is what you're going to see. So, <laughs> it's not going to be different. So, if you like it, if you can tolerate it right now, then know that for the rest of your life, be willing to tolerate it. And that's where people, you know, hoping that the person will change, please assume that there will not be, there will not be any change. Uh -huh. So, before you say yes, mm -hmm. so once you say yes now, then, you know then like love, is. yeah, love the person like that. If the person don't don't try to change the person, just walk in love. You already know that this is the weakness mm -hmm. of that person. Then live with it the rest of your life and enjoy it. Flow around it. Mm -hmm. You know the weakness, just flow around it. Yes. Yeah, because well, of time, we are going to. I just want to put some, give some words of closure was today um I want to once again thank you man of god we really appreciate you hallelujah thank you god bless you sir. thank you so much you have really really blessed us today and uh, i want to just uh, point out some few things that we get today before we close today's session one of the things man of god said is that god is the one who institute marriage. So if you have problem, you go to God. Don't think that that person, was, that your partner has the solution. It doesn't. So if you are expecting that person to give you that solution, it might not come. When you marry, you are marrying to be a Christ-centered marriage. It means you are honoring God in that marriage, not that person. You don't react to what your spouse does. Rather, you take the issue, whatever you are going through, to God. Because God is the one that institutes marriage. And when you take it to God, God is the one that will change that person. If you try it on your own, it might not work. And that is where we all need patience. The fruit of the Spirit comes in. You need patience in your marriage. Because it's so funny how it's opposite that attracts. Most of the time, it's people of opposite that attracts. And it's, it's not in place because one of the reasons why we understand God put the man and the woman together is to shape us is to make us better people. So that area where you are thinking that this man is so bad is something that God wants to shape in you. And likewise, the, 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 the woman, you know, that's your wife you think is so bad. It's something that uh, God is trying to shape in, in that woman. So we begin to see that if God bring you and this woman together or bring you and this man together when you have any conflict, go to God don't seek the solution from the man or from the woman yeah, because you might be disappointed thank you all for watching thank you, we want to say that uh, by this time next month we have another uh, series, we want to invite you to the next one. It's the last Saturday of every month, and the time is 2 p.m. American time. Mm -hmm. So I know our facilitator will have some final words. American Eastern time. American Eastern time. Thank you, Daddy. That's why you are there for me. Amen. Yes. And thank you for coming, my husband. This, is, this man taught me what you are teaching us, the Christ, 
the Christ uh, center. He taught me Christ center. I'm a woman when I don't like something, you will know that I don't like it. But he, he will do it Christ's way. What will Christ do? Yeah, he taught me that, and, and I'm that woman now. Oh, you are. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I tell you, you don't mess with me. I'm that woman. Don't mess with me, oh. That he taught me to be Christ centered. So after 43 years, I tell him, Daddy, why, why are we still, why are we still quarreling? We are 43 years. We don't need to be quarreling. I tell him that like all the time. We are 43, 43 in marriage. What is it? Why are we quarreling? Let's just get along. Amen. 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 It's been a pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bishop. Yes, your words of wisdom, amen, were mighty on today. So we thank you. So we just got to remember that in a Christ centered marriage, let's let Christ be the center. Yes. And uh, the focal point is serving. Amen. It's not about receiving, but serving. Yes. And also, um, going to god amen for that wisdom and grace because it might not be an easy process but in the long run you're um, becoming more like christ amen and by god's grace your spouse also amen so let's just remember to serve so it's been a pleasure amen please don't forget to share with your friends and family amen everybody can benefit from today's episode whether you're married or not amen Amen. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. God Everyone, bless you. God bless you all. And we we'll see you. Amen. Share with your friends yes. and family. Share with yeah. everybody. Amen. Who you think needs thank to hear you so this. Much. Your spouse included. It. Amen. Yes. And we'll see you all next month, the last Saturday of April. Yes. Amen. Amen. You all take care. 29th of April.